In this video, we are going to learn how to set up a custom configuration provider that connects to a SQL Server database. The idea is the following. We know that we can use configuration providers so that we don't have to hard code some information into our c -sharp applications. For example, we don't want to hard code a connection string and things like that. And the idea is that maybe sometimes we may want to use a SQL Server database as a custom configuration provider. And that is what we're going to learn in this video. And by the way, if you want to learn more about how to build minimal APIs using Entity Framework Core, buy my Udemy course today. And also, if you prefer to use Dapper and store procedures, I have a course on minimal APIs and Dapper. Link with a discount to these courses in the description of this video. All right, so back to the tutorial. So first I want to show you this application. As you can see here, I am in the program class. And as you can see, we have a DB contest, application DB contest. I have this configurations table configured with this configuration entity, which has two properties, key and value. And as you can see, this key is a primary key. And this is the table that I'm going to use to store the configuration data of my application. And let's see that here in the AppSettings development JSON, I have this my key value from AppSettings. And in the program class, I have this endpoint get config data. And I am using the iConfiguration to access the value of that key. And if I come here to the HTTP file, we can see that if I send a request, we're going to see value from AppSettings. Again, nothing out of the ordinary. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to create that custom configuration provider that will allow us to retrieve configuration data from SQL Server. All right, so let's come here. I want to come to here because I want to create a new folder in which we're going to put our implementation. So configurations. And then in here, I will create three classes. The first one is going to be a provider. So DB configuration provider. In this provider, I will put the code to retrieve the information from the configurations table and put it into the configuration dictionary. So let me say here, configuration provider. And this requires me to say here, public override, and I will choose load. Let me delete this. And in here, I will get an instance of my application DB context. Now, this is a special class in a special place which has its own life cycle. So I cannot directly simply inject my application DB context here, but what I have to do is to use a factory. So let's do that. Let's come here to the program class. And instead of saying here a DB context, I will say DB context factory so that I get access to the IDB context factory service, which will allow me to create on the fly an instance of my application DB context. Let's see that. Let me say here, CTOR, and I will say here, IDB context factory of application DB context, and then DB factory, control dot, create an assignment, say field, and then in here, I can say var context equal to DB factory dot create DB context. And then I need to create a dictionary that is going to contain all of my configuration data that I get from my configurations table. So let me say bar data equal to new dictionary of a string a string bar configurations equal to contest configurations to list. This is the data from the configurations table. Then for each configuration in configurations data key equal to configuration dot value. Excellent. And then I will say data equal to data. This data comes from a property from this base class that I have here. All right, so this is done here. So now I need to configure a source, a source that is going to serve this provider. So let me say class DB configuration source. This will implement the I configuration source interface, implement interface. Again, I will inject my IDB context factory, DB factory, control dot, as I say field, and then in here, I will just return an instance of my DB configuration provider, and I will pass my DB factory. All right, and then I will create yet another class, the last class, and this will be an extension method, DB configuration extensions. So this will be a static class, public static I configuration, a database configuration. Let me say here, this I configuration builder, builder, comma, and I will receive our IDB contest factory. And then I will just say here, return builder at, and let me say here, new DB 
configuration source. We're going to pass our configuration source and let's pass the DB factory. All right, so now we can use this helper method from our program class. Let's go there. And since we want to have an instance of the service, IDB context factory, I'll create here a scope. Then let me say DB factory equal to a scope service provider, get required service, and then let's get our service. And finally, builder configuration at database configuration, and let's pass our DB factory. And believe it or not, with this, we have a first implementation. So let me say control chief B to compile my application. Let's see that if we come here to HTTP, we're going to see that if we send this, nothing seems to happen because here in my database, I don't have any data in configurations. So as you can see, if we don't have data in the configurations table, it means that this will just behave as any other configuration provider, which means that if we don't have data here, then it's going to use another configuration provider like an environment variable, an app settings JSON, and so on. So let me say here, my key and value from SQL Server. All right. Now let me come back here. Let me say Control Shift B to recompile my application. Now let's click on Send. And as you can see, we have value from SQL Server. Excellent. Now there is one bit of a problem. The problem is that if I come here and I update this value, let me say here, update, enter, and let's come here. And let's see that if I click on send requests, we are still going to get value from SQL Server, which means that yes, this is getting the information from our configurations table, but it is not being reloaded. So what can we do about it? Something that I like to do is to simply use a timer. A timer will allow me to refresh this data at an interval, like for example, every minute, every five minutes, every 10 seconds, and so on. So let's do that. Let's come here and let me say timer equal to new system threading timer. And let me say here, auto refresh control dot generate this method. Then let me say here, a state is going to be null and do time. I need to provide a do time because when my application starts up automatically, this is going to invoke this load method. And therefore, if I don't provide a do time, then this method will run twice. And I don't want that. So what I will do is that I will say here, bar interval, let me say here, time span, just because this is a tutorial, I will say five seconds. So we don't have to wait too much. But in your case, you may want to give it more time so that you don't have this running every five seconds. So let me say here, from seconds, five, and then I will say, interval here for the do time and also the period interval. All right. So now let me put this as a field because remember that a timer implements a disposable and therefore I must say here a disposable control dot implement. So that now let me look for that dispose and let me say here timer dot dispose. All right. Now let's come here to auto refresh and let me say Let's say here load, I will invoke this load method and then I will say on reload, which will tell SPRONET Core that the configuration provider has been refreshed. And that's actually it. With this, we're good to go. Control F5 one more time. All right, so my app is running. And let's see that if we come here, let's come here. Let's say send request, update. And if I come to here, uh, let me say, update with a timer, enter. Let's come here and let's see that I can click on here. And as you can see, we have update with a timer, which means that indeed we were able to build a custom configuration provider that connects to a SQL Server database. And also we use a timer as a mechanism that allows us to update or refresh our configuration source. Thank you.